Hello and welcome to another episode of the NBA 2K Podcast. I am your host, RF Ribeiro. But most people know me as Rib. And today's episode is, of course, over the latest courtside report. Which isn't much. We don't have much to go on. It was a half hour live stream from 2K. Uh, and the court uh, courtside report itself is also a a quick read compared to the other ones so um yeah we'll we'll go through it and what that means for my nba and my gm mode and then uh, we'll talk about other stuff if we have time so there's a video of course and i will link this if you still haven't seen it and i'm the one that gives you the link that that's great, but link to the courtside report will be in the description. There's also a video in there. If you want to watch that video instead, you could do that. Um, so, this year we're giving you power to create your own backstory and control the narrative surrounding your success. So, a little bit more role play involved in the modes my gm returns in 2k25 of course and this franchise mode puts you in the role of an nba team's general manager you'll navigate roster building managing your governors and team's expectations of you and much more as you run a world-class championship nba franchise and you can pick your own backstory so what that means is um you can also customize it to make you make it your own, but let's say like you're an ex-scout who got promoted to be a GM or you're an ex-player who's now a GM. And depending on the backstory that you select, you have different attributes. But like I said, you can also click custom and then just, I guess, put points into whatever attributes you want. The attributes being offensive, defensive coaching, sports medicine, business, charisma, and analytics. And then after you pick, you know, your little uh, backstory, uh, there's perks involved. There's actually quite a lot of perks, and I haven't gone through these before. I don't know if they're all useful, if they're all viable, I guess is the better word. Um, having a quick look here, deep bench. Bench players have all attributes increased by four. But the top five players have all attributes lowered by two. Hot streak increases all attributes by three when on a plus three win streak, but lowers them by two when not on a streak. And charisma. Other GMs are more likely to trade. Okay, so, I mean, we're, there's a lot. There's a lot of perks. 55 available perks for you to choose from at launch. And more set to be unveiled throughout the year. So, what that means is, mm, my GM is going to have like a, they're going to have updates throughout the year. Is that, has that ever happened? <laughs> I might have to make an X post about this, because I feel like we just kind of, we just kind of went over that. Has that ever happened? I don't, I don't play the modes enough to know, but that's actually, that actually, I think, ha has been underlooked. Um... That is really cool. There's also background perks, so it's not just my GM perks. You also have background perks. So if you're an ex player, you have the former player perk, increases team chemistry gains, and raises natural team chemistry equilibrium. Um, you have starting perks, starting perks, and then you have exclusive perks that you get as you level up. So it seems like there's a lot. It seems like the game, the game mode has been. I'm not going to say revamped, but updated significantly behind these perks. Behind, you know, there's so many perks with more to come. And then you have to think, you do a playthrough and, you know, whatever. However it goes, you like it, you don't like it. You create a new playthrough and you can get yourself some new perks. And see how that would change, you know, whatever you're trying to accomplish. Um... That sounds interesting, honestly, To just to give it a try. Because I do like these modes a lot. Not so much for 2K, because in 2K I'm so busy, you know, creating content online and, and the Rack and Pro-Am and trying to help people, uh, you know, shoot better, play better. 
And that's honestly what I like to do the most as well in 2K25. I don't really get to play something like my GM, but in other games, in NHL, in FIFA, um, this is more on a computer, but Football Manager, uh, I really enjoy the managerial role-playing aspect of sports games. Really, really enjoy it, the trades and the scouting and the, the uh, developing of players. I enjoy that a lot. If 2K ever gets to that point where I find it enjoyable, then of course, yeah, I'll play it more. But it's not that I don't enjoy it right now, what 2K has, but I just, I, I play so much online that I don't really have time to play anything else. It's not even just my GM, but just any mode in general that isn't uh, 5v5 modes like Rack and Pro. I pretty much don't play nothing else. Uh, now this one, this feature is, uh, from what I've read, people are 50-50 on it. Uh, brand new, 2K25, is the MyGM building. It's an actual building. A free roaming space where you take control of your MyGM to carry out responsibility. So, their role playing is not just clicking, uh, buttons on menus. You actually get to see your my GM and go from room to room. I'm assuming. I'm assuming you don't leave the actual building and start running around. When the governor or one of your staff members wants to have a conversation with you, you'll see a notification on the calendar or other lending menus. Maybe the CFO needs to talk to you about cutting costs or managing public opinion, or the head coach wants to talk to you about a lineup change. You can then go to the My GM building, walk up to them, and have a conversation in person for a more authentic experience. So the reason I say this 50/50 is because there's a lot of people that don't even want the city; they want the city completely removed. So seeing this, there's people that get triggered right away, like, oh, more walking? That's, that's what we want in a basketball game. And of course, there's other people that see the real-life aspects of this, right? And it's different from, I think, any other sports game. I'm thinking about all the modes, all the games that have this mode, or the equivalent of this mode. I can't recall any other mode having a my a GM that you can actually move around and uh, yeah go and talk to people with. So it's cool, it's unique, it's original. But they did go the route that I I think quite a few people don't like. Hopefully, it's implemented in a way where we don't see it as. Um, strenuous like a grind like uh like a waste of time i guess is what i'm trying to say hopefully we don't see it as that and we see it as something useful and yeah hey 2k community are you a competitive player who likes money prove it on gamer saloon the ultimate arena for nba 2k players whether you're a pro or just starting out, Gamer Saloon lets you challenge players from around the world and win real cash prizes. So no more playing one of you wants to brag about it. Now you can get paid for winning. Gamer Saloon offers a seamless platform with various tournaments and head-to-head -head matches, perfect for every level of player. Listeners of the NBA 2K podcast can sign up today at gamersaloon.com slash rib podcast all one word gamersaloon.com slash rib podcast link in the description okay so leaderboards the ranked modes from the previous my nba is now tied to my gm compete with others to see how quickly you can hit level 20 if you get fired by your governor it's game over with so many options and ways to play we're sure you'll have a ton of fun trying new MyGM builds as you do your best to make your way up the leaderboard. So that's what I was talking about earlier. Now you can create new MyGM builds uh, each time you play. The leaderboard, I've never really gotten into it. I didn't even know my NBA had a ranked leaderboard mode, but now it's tied to my GM. So that's neat. Uh, the Curry era, if people don't know, in my NBA, you now have the Magic versus Bird era, Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, 
and the new one is the Steph Curry era, which begins in 16-17 NBA season. And of course, uh, I don't think I have to say it, but you are reliving the dynasty years of the Golden State Warriors with Curry, KD, uh, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green. So, uh, yeah, neat. I think it was inevitable. Pretty cool. Uh, will I try it? Yeah, I mean, I'll probably try it. I tried the other... I tried the Eras already in 2K24. I didn't spend too much time, like I said. I spent a lot of time online in my my player. But, uh, yeah, I could see myself trying it, you know, middle of the year, taking a break. Yeah. Uh, for content purposes, probably not. Probably not. But... That does seem interesting. Now, the NBA Cup, or as we know it in real life, is the in-season tournament. But I think now it's actually called the Emirates NBA Cup, I think. It's it's gotten sponsored, right? So they changed the name. Well, it's still an in-season tournament, but now it has an official name, which I don't think had one before. So, uh, yeah, that's actually in my NBA modes, which I think is awesome. Really cool. It's a, it's a small addition, but... In my opinion, when we're talking about role playing and my GM and my NBA and all that, it's the little details that really immerse the player in those modes. So adding adding that NBA Cup is a very good idea, I think. League expansion and contraction. There's a new uh, way to do this with full fluidity to add or remove up to six teams to the league each and every offseason, rather than being limited to a total of six teams per save. So if you want to recre recreate the league's expansion boom in the 80s and 90s, or dramatically increase or decrease the size of the current league, you now have that opportunity. Uh, there's also going to be league news delivered to you that change over time to authentically represent what it was like in each era. Previously, this was a 2K Times newspaper, which I think we all remember. And it evolved into a web page, and then it became a social media feed. In 2K25, there's a new web 2.0 page format to bridge the gap in the late 2000s between the start of the internet and more modern-day social media. So I really like that. Um, I'm happy that's back and improved. The streamlined my staff management to me is my favorite part. Uh, my staff had up to 17 staff positions surrounding your GM for you to fill and manage, but we noticed it could be overwhelming for players. So now there's like a simplified way to do it. Um, I think it's like five different positions that you have to worry about now instead of 17. You hire bonus staff under each department as you need, and bonus staff are an easy way to boost the performance of a department without having to micromanage hiring and firing extra staff. Um, I do like that the little chat boxes that you have, I think they're a little bit more optional. There's other sports games, which I'm not going to mention, that have incredibly... Oh my god, you can't skip them, and there's so many. There's like 10 minutes worth of chat boxes in a row sometimes, and it's very annoying. So I do like that 2K is also making those a little bit shorter um, and more optional, I think. Um, I was going to say, so this is, this is, I guess, the best part about this. If you're still listening, you're like, eh, I'm not really impressed. Or, uh, I wish there was more. Or, you like the mode, but you don't really know. So look, this is the best part about this. The best part is computers being able to actually play the new Gen 2K25. And if you don't already know, I suggest you go and look it up. Maybe one day I'll do a full podcast on it. Um... 2K modded, 2K25 modded, and I don't mean modded with cheats, but modded cosmetically through the My NBA, My GM modes, 
it's one of the best basketball experiences you can have in like current times. I remember in 2K20, I think it was 2K20, I had it on PC and I used to stream it and I had, oh my God, I had so many mods. I had mods for the court to make it look better, mods for the rims, the rim sounds, the nets, the the jerseys, the uniforms, the the, um, the scoreboards, the uh, real life ads, um, the real life uh, player faces, um, and everything combined. The game was so realistic, and this was two K twenty. I can only imagine now with, with new gen on PC, you guys are going to see some insane cyber faces. Um, I'm not going to post any links yet in the description, but once the game comes out and we start to see this, I will definitely, I will definitely talk about it because it needs to be brought up. How good these people are who a lot of them make all of this for free. A lot of them are just people that enjoy the game and know how to code and design stuff and they do it for free. And they put it out there for us to be able to download it and enjoy it ourselves. Of course this is completely cosmetic, completely for offline. But that is one of the most exciting things about this My NBA, My GM mode in 2K25 is the opportunity for people on Steam on PC to be able to get a hold of this and completely revamp the mode and make it look amazing. I can't wait for you guys to see that because I know a lot of people don't realize 2K on PC is worth anything and this is honestly the strength of 2K on PC is how realistic, how amazing it could look. Um, and of course, the best way to, to show it off is in my NBA and my jam modes. So, really exciting. I will post um, the link to this court site in the description, like I said. And I think I'm going to leave this podcast at that. I think we covered everything that was worth covering, in my opinion. And, yeah, we're just over 15 minutes. I think that's a good amount for this one of course uh, there was supposed to be my uh, uh dw news so wnba news uh that did not come with the my nba my gm news they got split into two different days of the same week i can't say which day uh but it's soon uh and then when that comes out i will talk again uh maybe i do a podcast in between then maybe not but anyway uh yeah that's it for this one thank you for listening and i will see you on the next one